Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And I'll take the headphones off. There you go. Right. There'll be two versions of this. One with background music, one without. The background music is provided by Kevin McLeod. Details in the description. The, uh, that'll be about two hours long. And if you listen to this, it's going to be relaxation and sleep session. If you're listening just for the relaxation... I would suggest setting your alarm uh, as well as if you're, you know, because you might fall asleep, okay? Um, If you're listening to go to sleep and to maybe stay asleep, then, you know, don't set your alarm. So, that's it. Now, there's... A chance of background sound, unfortunately. The the neighbours downstairs like their music and um, possibly have hearing issues, I don't know. So, so I can't, you know, I can't blame them for that. So uh, I've been waiting all day to make a recording and it's now, what is it, 5.21 and... This, you know, I don't know if the microphone picks up that stuff, but I can hear it. So hopefully, uh, you can ignore it. If the if it's if it's too uh, too much, then I might not do a version of this with background music. You can just have that. Ha. <laughs> <sighs> Which brings me to noisy neighbours is one of my little pet peeves. I'm not so bad for it these days. It doesn't bug bog, bog me, bug me the way it used to. Um, but you know, when it comes to things like relaxation, there's so much more to it than just relaxing. There's so much more to it than, you know, maybe falling asleep. There's there's the effects it has on you afterwards, not just when you're listening to the recording. There's the effects it has on your body, your mind, the way that you... uh, respond maybe to issues of anger or conflict or things just not going the way you'd like them to go Uh, and that word respond as opposed to react because if we live our lives just reacting all the time we're basically a very primitive animal you know that we that's all we are we did basically just crocodiles or rabbits in the field we're not you know if all we do is react to what's going on then we're you know we're not very evolved as people now and people that react all the time they are properly uh, problematic they have problematic lives their lives are difficult for themselves and for anyone that comes in contact with them they're among the worst friends to have uh, even though they at times they may be absolutely wonderful but someone is constantly reacting to everything that you say to them like what do you mean by that what do you mean by that uh, you know it's, it gets straining and um, 
imagine how it must be for them to be constantly reacting the the energy the anxiety the stress of constantly the body changing um going into uh panic mode because they feel they're under attack when they're not is awful and I've, I've kind of been there I used to be very reactive less so now um, but I was never at the point of being you know like the reactive all the time I was never quite there but then no one's all the time anything are they really but I wasn't a I didn't end up going to prison or end up doing bad things because I was feeling under attack and you know I wasn't quite in <laughs> I was nowhere near that level and it must be horrible for those people that go through that on a daily basis but it's horrific for those that have to deal with those people and that's one of the things that is a little bit taboo in mental health times you know the, the um, it's almost been taboo in the past to really even talk about mental illness uh, now it's become more of a almost like a like you you must we must talk about it yeah, it's all, almost compulsory to a level you know there's only a certain amount no don't go into too much detail but people are, seem to be more open with um, the effects mental illness has on them what doesn't seem to get addressed is the effects mental illness has on society and on the friends and family of those that are just um, being however they are and that's something I'm not really going to talk about that in this but it's something that might be worth thinking about thinking about the awful possibly horrendous emotional effects somebody's illness has had on another person uh, you know especially when it comes to like this, the extreme uh, final that might happen you know there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of support out there for people that are dealing with somebody that is mentally ill uh, as well as not really a huge amount of support for people that are mentally ill not really I mean it's it's improved it's 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 gone downhill with the coronavirus times but you know uh, it's improved uh, probably over the last 20 years or so so it's not just people that have well, mental illness doesn't just affect people that are diagnosed with mental illness or mental health issue. That's the f it's it's way bigger than that. Way bigger, and they are the people that also need, you know, the supporters, the parents, the children, uh, the people that work with uh, working with someone that's continuously reactive because let's face it most people that are mentally mentally have mental health issues are not diagnosed I'd say probably most of people don't even go to the doctor because they just think this is how I am this is who I am I'm just naturally an arsehole this is how I am, I'm better than everyone else, I'm this, I'm that, not realising that that is a sign of being 
mentally ill, being delusional, having possibly psychosis. So it's a weird one because I personally, I've met a lot of people with mental health issues and in some ways they seem to be the more sane ones, the more calmer ones than the people that don't even believe in mental illness. It's kind of interesting really. And I think there's something about facing, facing our self. Actually looking at ourselves. And the thing with mental illness, usually, well I'd say usually but not always, is you get a chance to actually see yourself. But... Not with delusions. You know, do you get to see yourself as you really are if, you know, perhaps the person's not on medication or they've just got del- got deluded thinking, which is something that... I'm not going to say the majority of people, but probably everybody is deluded in some way. Some people are thinking, oh, they're the best at something when they're clearly not. Or they deserve everything that everybody else has. And why should they work for it? They'll just take it. So that's every thief in the world. Well, not in the world, let's say this country. Some parts of the world, you need to steal bread to to live, to eat, to live. But not here. The amount of people, oh, I've got no money. Well, if you didn't take drugs, or if you didn't smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol, you would be able to give your children breakfast cereal, which costs, what, a pound, you know? So, that's not everyone. In these times, people have obviously lost everything, lost their jobs, don't have any money, but... I'm pretty sure that I would always be able to feed my children if I had children. Might not be the greatest food in the world, but it would be something. A bowl of breakfast cereal costs pennies, literally. So there's a lot of delusion out there, a lot of victim being victims. I'm a victim. There should be a song made for that. And I've been there. I love. I loved being a victim. I still do sometimes. Everybody else's fault. I don't have to take responsibility for anything. You know, it's. But when you, I suppose it's sometimes easier for people when they're younger. I think it was easier for me when I was younger to be a victim than it is now. At 50, I think back and think, well, realistically, the last time anyone even really hurt me is a long time ago. You know, the child, people at 50, you, unlikely you're going to get anyone even be rude to you. In a sense, if you're you, you're almost invisible to society, so that brings on different issues, of course, possibly. But there's stuff that I used to be a victim for, you know. This happened when I was a kid, and I went and did this, and I was in the children's homes, and uh, and I'm thinking that was like forty. 43, 44 years ago. That's a long time. Long time. Doesn't mean it's not important or it didn't affect me because I know it did. Hugely affected me. 
and still does to a degree but it can't affect me the way it did it's, it just can't anymore it's too long ago but part of that is because I've addressed it I've not cured it I've not stopped it from having happened but when you're a victim when you stay a victim you can't move on you can't grow you can't recover you'll always be a victim that will be it until you choose not to that's the thing no one can take that victimization away from you I know people who are in their 40s that still think still are victims oh everyone blames me for everything Uh, yeah still a victim they're unhappy they're always going to be unhappy as long as they think that way you can't be a victim and be happy at the same time and I think we have to break the victim up into two bits there's the victim of a horrific situation a crime well yeah it's always a crime isn't it it's always a vicious crime that a person's a victim of whether it's sexual whether it's physical whether it's emotional um but you know some emotional trauma for one person isn't for another person so it can be it can be different so there is a point when that person was a victim like legitimately a victim and needed help at the time and maybe for quite a long time afterwards and very likely didn't get the help they needed very likely especially anyone in the past you know in the 70s or 80s in the 70s child abuse was ignored I mean, certain parts of child abuse was actually encouraged. Hitting kids, locking them up, telling them that they're stupid and they're, you know, being verbally abusive to kids was almost encouraged. Happened in school by the teachers. There was violence towards the children by the teachers. And that only stopped in the 80s in my country. So... In some ways, I guess everybody has been a victim at certain times in their life. And some people, if you're listening to this and you're going through something now, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about when I'm talking about people giving up the victim mentality. I'm talking about people who want to move on with their life. Sometimes if a crime has been done towards you and it's fresh, you probably don't want to move on at the moment. You know, you need to deal with what's going on and to give yourself healing time. And moving on isn't something, it's not not something you can rush. You have to go at your your own pace give yourself time to heal and the the problem with that I've found with people some people when it comes to having been victims and blaming everybody else if they're still a victim 20 years later in their head blaming everyone else or hating certain parts of society hating all men hating all women hating all foreigners I think once someone gets that mentality of hate it's very easy just to add other categories on when you've got someone using words uh, derogatory words towards different races or um, the sexes different sexes 
and they use that in their everyday speech and you can feel the vile or the bile the vile bile coming out of their mouth almost like snot just squirting out of their mouth as they say those words and they're almost disgusting to be around because they're holding on to being a victim and during those periods during those moments they come across as disgusting human beings even though that's not what they're like all the time because it, victims is someone who's got the victim mentality may be the most amazing person ever until you tap into their almost like their secret world their secret inner world of which they base their life on so they might help people you see this in sometimes in religion uh, so say something like a, a Christian religion for example and there might be a Christian and they spend all their time devote their time to helping the poor to doing all kinds of Christian charity work amazing and they might devote all their life bring up their kids and devote their whole life to this and then one day their their son comes home and announces that he's gay and suddenly this this woman or this man will you see what's really going on inside them now that's not the real them it's maybe it's part of them I would say the real them is the one that's helping people the kind person but then this bile vile disgusting part of them where they show hatred towards their child maybe now this is an example I'm sure there's plenty a situation like that would not result in hatred towards their child because it doesn't you know homosexuality and all that stuff that goes with certain religions but it kind of does go together with that unfortunately it's a lot of religions are against being gay you know that's a fact so let's not you know pretend so that kind of stuff is very similar to the victimization the victim mind where they kind of they can't move on they're kind of stuck stuck in this space and it takes sometimes it takes takes a bit of uh, maneuvering to get them there not that I would try and get someone there but they may be really cool most of the time and then a victimization might only come into their head when they're alone or it might come into their head when somebody says something that reminds them of something that's been said to them when they were a kid or they might meet someone that looks similar to someone that hurt them when they were younger you know that's going to happen in reality human beings we all look different but we don't all look that different you know there's very there's similarities between humans so you got this this weird the word should be weird but there's a definite feeling of delusion when it comes to victims people that want want to continue to be a victim And then that person who is going to be traumatized by his parents saying, oh, you're no longer part of the family, 
or you're going to hell if you follow your dreams or follow your natural instincts of being with another man or another woman so then that person is going to be traumatized by that experience I mean how couldn't they it's just awful to the point where maybe they spend the next 20 years of their life if not more feeling victimized and thinking that people are treating them differently because of their sexuality I'm a victim, you don't like me because I'm gay. You wouldn't give me that job because I'm gay. And, for example, and sometimes they may be right. But, I've met people, there's one person who was mixed race. Mixed I don't know what the correct term is these days, but, and he really walked around with believing that everybody had it in for him because of his colour, of his skin. It's what he really believed in. He'd, He'd tell everyone. And he couldn't get past it. He was a victim every day of his life in his own head. A victim. You know, if he was waiting to cross the road and a car didn't stop, they were a racist. You know, it was that kind of mentality. Um, If if he was waiting for a... a, (laughs) If it was raining, then the rain was racist because he, you know, he wanted it to be a sunny day. It's, It's that kind of real ridiculous level of victim mentality and the basic fact is this anyone that is a victim that has the victim mentality not anyone that's a victim but anyone has the victim mentality and feels that they are a victim and the world is against them and all that stuff and nothing they do is going to make any difference and they're going to be unhappy and all that stuff they're right they are going to be unhappy for the rest of their life unless they change it's as simple as that now they might change naturally Sometimes all it needs is to meet somebody who is a positive person and, you know, love. See, I don't love anyone. I love my ferret, but I don't have that kind of love thing. But, you know, I believe and I've seen it. Love can transform people. It doesn't have to be love of a woman or a man. It could be love of a child. It could be love of a grandchild. I mean, my my dad transformed. Honestly, transformed when his first grandchild was born. He transformed. I'm, I, I'm not going to go into details, but he was a different person. He had love in him, which I'd never seen before. Like it was radiating out of him. Love. It's almost like it was locked in there. I never got to see it. And suddenly it's there. It's just squirting out of his ears. Love. And he adored her. And he still does adore her. Ten years later. Wasn't this like a a short term novelty thing. There was that. It took this little baby girl to open up his heart I'm not saying he didn't have any love he's married and of course he's got love in him and he might love me a little bit I don't know Um, I think he tolerates me but I'm talking about that kind of real love that you can see you can see it as a bystander like wow so 
I've probably got a little bit of that with Andre the Ferret. Because sometimes I cuddle him and I do. I just feel it. I feel the love. I don't feel it towards humans. But, you know, it might happen one day. But the... That's... Love can melt. Hatred can melt. Anger can melt. All of that negative stuff. Like being a victim. But I think I would say that it still needs attention, still needs uh, to be faced, rather than just allowing it to, you know, if it melts and everything's good. But the people that, what seems weird is people that are victims don't seem to realise that they're playing at being victims, even though they're constantly going on about what victims they are. They don't seem to understand or recognise it. And they really seem to believe it when they say, oh, nothing I do is going to make any difference and they're, you know, everything's everything's crap. And And as I said before, now I'm going in different directions with this, but as I said before, one thing that's not recognised it's not see it doesn't seem to be talked about is how horrible it is being around people like that when they're in that mode so it's not about being it's not about uh that it's horrible all the time being around people like that because otherwise why put yourself through it i'm surprised that more people aren't on their own people that mental health issues I'm often surprised at how many of them actually manage to have relationships I've never managed it and I'm not really particularly bad well bad it's, it's not use the word bad but um, you know I used to be very reactive but again I don't think I was extreme <laughs> maybe at times but not yeah I don't yeah I was reactive but I I don't for me and this isn't really about me but for me I have never really been able to have attachments with people I don't get attached Uh, and a lot of that well I guess all of it is part of my upbringing you know I was very young and I was moving around a lot and I've had I mean, mother figures, I've had what, one, two, three, four, five. You know, so I've had a few mother figures when I was younger. And so I very much likely got really attached to all of those mothers and eventually taken away again to the point where I just it kind of broke me in the attachment side of things but I know some people can go the other way they get so attached almost uh, I've seen on some of uh, Facebook pages Facebook uh, yeah pages for mental illness and health and stuff where they go on about um, treating their partners almost like little dogs, like where they wash them and they clothe them and they do all this stuff. It's like, wow, they're not dolls. These are human beings. And some people can't stand being on their own. And that's something I really never understood. And that's probably my blind, my blind spot. Maybe I don't understand why people have to be with people. I don't understand why people want to be with each other. But that's a person. <laughs> why are you doing these talks? Why are you talking about this? If you if you're also crazy, I'm not crazy. I'm not. No one's well. You know, it's not about being crazy. It's 
I don't have that need to be with another person. I just don't have it. And I had it more when I was younger because I wanted to have sex. But that was it. You know, I didn't um I didn't have I liked, you know, going out and I liked I think I've always liked women and well, I did, you know, back then. And I'd date and stuff just like anyone else. But the idea of like, oh, I've no, I know people that can't, they plan their next relationship before the end of the last one. They're literally ready to move in with the next person before they've moved out of the last house. So I don't understand that. That's like, what's so scary about being on your own? It's, but I some people do, they can't stand. You're like, come on. <laughs> I couldn't be with someone like that. But that's just me. But then I wouldn't be the right person for that person, would I? If someone constantly wants to know where I am all the time and wants to be with me all the time, well, I'm not the right person for them because I'm not going to be able to give them what they need. Even though what they really need to do is sort it out and figure out why they're like that and learn to be able to be on their own um, and some of that might be due to just being afraid all the time and I've had periods when I've been afraid all the time but then I never trusted people so I I didn't feel safe when I was with people I felt safer on my own This has turned into therapy, self-therapy. This was going to be a relaxation session. Hasn't really turned out that way, has it? But... I suppose the main two things I was thinking about when I started this recording was... People playing the victim. Or acting like a victim. Or believing that they're a victim, or however you want to word it, and other people that are suffering because of uh, having to deal with those that are ill, mentally ill, like spouses, uh, mothers, children. I said co-workers even you're spending 8 hours a day in an office with someone that is like you know one minute happy and everything the next minute crying or blaming everyone else or moaning about their boyfriend or girlfriend and being angry and then being happy you know that's that's an emotional roller coaster um, for everyone within like a hundred yards sometimes it's not fun and it's not necessarily anyone's fault. I mean, I, I actually worked in, I started a job in this office, and the lady, this lovely lady, really nice, she'd been off ill. Well, as far as I know, she, she'd been off, came back. And the reason she'd been off is because her child had died. I mean, like her. I think her six year old child had been ill and died and she'd, she, she'd talk about it um, and then you know, sometimes she'd start talking about it and then she'd, she'd lose it which is understandable she shouldn't have been back at work um, she should have been given as much time off as she needed Um because you, you know it's a situation like that is just horrendous isn't it for someone to go through but she, the atmosphere was awful now from a work perspective I was in sales 
eventually she did I think she lost her job or she she decided to quit or she left or she was told to go home and then I don't know what happened I didn't see her again but now on one side it's absolutely terrible what went on with her but on the flip side she was bringing everyone down And that's and I feel guilty for saying that, but it's true. But then I went through a depression when I was at the same place, and I was probably bringing everyone down as well. But not, you know. The difference is, to me, she had a reason for being depressed, and of course not. I don't think anyone would argue with that. And she talked to me, and I suppose maybe it's because of the counselling past that I seem to be open to be talked to. Um, I don't know, when she first started talking to me, I thought she was flirting. I didn't know anything about her past or her life. So that's why I spoke to her. And And then I was depressed at the same place. And I felt guilty for being depressed because I hadn't lost a child. So what right have I got to be depressed? I've not got gone through what she's gone through. That's like the worst, among the worst things that could ever happen to a person. And, although technically it happened to the child, but, you know, to to be part of that process, to lose a child, it's just... Is is unimaginable, other than to those that have actually gone through it. I mean, it's just just can't even imagine it. And I wanted to help. So the other people in the in the thing was the, in the group were starting to sort of not gossip, but sort of saying, "Oh, this is getting heavy." when they were trying to because you know at work we were supposed to be doing a job um, that involved pretending to be positive so that's not a job that she should have got back into you know you can't it is pretending you'd have to be pretend to be positive if you've just come from you know something as huge as that I know someone that went through that and it's years and years and years ago and their whole life is a mess still because they just just can't move forward from it not really they think they have but their behaviour shows they haven't So, I mean, this isn't about losing children. I mean, I could talk about that for an hour, but yeah, it's just that's a subject that I struggle with, if I'm honest. It's such a. It's. I've never lost a child. Well, I had a child aborted, but that was at the level of being inside the mother. But I've never. I lost a child before I had the child, <laughs> but I've not gone through the process of getting to know a, a little boy or girl and and I don't know if I would be able to I, I I know I couldn't cope with that hopefully I would learn to but in my state of mind now how I am now if that happened um yeah it would you know it would destroy my life as it is now you know there'd be no normality for a long long time but luckily I don't have any children so I don't have to go through that it's uh, (laughs) the benefit maybe I don't know but so who's going to care for the carers 
Who's going to care for those parents that have had to watch their son or daughter from the age of maybe 13, taking drugs, sleeping with adults, shoplifting and then doing other stuff that's worse, via maybe going in and out of prison, maybe even being a, even attacking them violently and not being able to do anything for that child of theirs. Not being able to do a single thing that actually made any difference because ultimately they're still injecting the heroin or smoking the crack or being violent because they're a victim and they can't move on from being a victim because they don't want to they refuse to because they believe it so fully they believe that they're a victim and really believe it how do you help someone like that and the fact is you can't unless they decide to no longer be a victim that is the only way pretty much that someone can change their life from being you know to anyone that feels that they are a victim and it's running their life or ruining their life or controlling their life anyone and not just their lives other people's lives their partner's lives, family's lives. Because victims don't keep that to themselves. They love to share the share the joy. And again, they don't probably mean to. But they, you know, victims are very generally not very quiet about it. They're not, there's not that many secret victims out there. And I'm talking about after the event, years and years and years afterwards. And some people are victims when nothing bad necessarily has really happened to them. Bad stuff's happened to everybody, obviously. Everybody's gone through a really horrible time um, at some time in their life. But some people almost seem to have just maybe their negative level a level of negativity is much higher than the positivity and somehow they've managed to believe something that isn't true or believing that they're not worthy that they're not and people like that can be victims because they've been some people are taught that from as a baby Maybe they have victim parents, victim mentality parents. I've known lots of negative people that pass it on to children. There's no point trying because you'll only fail. Think of the worst case scenario. That way if something nice happens, it's a bonus. That kind of negative thinking. Oh, there's, there's, no, point, there's no point going out about a jacket because it's, it's bound to rain if you do that. It might happen, but that, assuming that, you know, just expecting bad things to happen, expecting the worst, that is victim mentality. It might not be on a level that can uh, destroy relationships or destroy a person's life. That person's not going to be happy, not really. If that's the way they are, that's the way they think. So there's a lot of uh, very, there's not a huge amount of quiet victims, people with victim mentalities. They like to share their negativity. What do they say? Misery loves company. Or well, negativity, I guess, is misery, isn't it? Or causes misery. 
Now, in an ideal world, we could avoid these people. And I'm part of that category of people uh, in some ways. Less so than before, but I have my, I have my moments. And I, I guess we all have our moments. It depends on how how strong that level is. If you really believe it, you know, sometimes I think something and then I laugh and I realise I don't really believe it. But I enjoy being a victim. I enjoy, I do. I don't do it as much as I did. But there have been times when I've really, and it's not happiness, but it's definitely pleasure. Uh, maybe it's a sadistic pleasure in feeling sorry for myself, playing the victim. You know, I haven't got a job or I've got a low paid job because this happened when I was a kid. And it's almost, it's almost like saying, oh, I've been cursed. I'm cursed. Therefore, it's out of my control. There's no point even trying anything because the end result is already planned. Yeah, fatalism, I think that's called, isn't it? Well, whatever happens is going to happen. Okay. So... If every young person for the ages of maybe 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 to maybe 25, if all of those people stay at home, never go out to pubs, nightclubs, and never mingle, then they will still end up with the same partner. They'll still end up with the same amount of children still, as they would have done if they had gone to the nightclub. Yeah? So we're saying, whatever happens is going to happen anyway. Whatever's supposed to be is going to be. Ridiculous. Again, victim mentality. Laziness, actually. Some people are just too lazy to think for themselves. And... Again, I've done that. I love being lazy. But we, we need to think for ourselves. What what do we believe? What do you believe? Do you believe something because that's what your parents told you? I mean, one of... One of the benefits probably of being kind of reactive is don't always just take on whatever someone else says. Which it can also be like, oh, let's have an argument here. So I didn't take on my uh, the political views of my elders when I was a kid. More out of rebellion, probably. And then as I got older, I'd think about it. Never was a fan of hatred. Never understood the idea of hating someone because of uh, their belief system or because of their sexuality or their skin colour or where they're from. For me, hating someone is because of their behaviour towards me or maybe towards someone that I care about. Then, yeah, that, that can be a reason for anger. One of the things when I was very young, hated bullies. Even when I was eight, I remember beating up a bully and he was trying to bully my friend who only had one kidney and he was because my friend had a bag you know a urine bag thing and this um, 
I think he was poking a bag, this this bully, and making fun of him. So I beat him up. Um I'm not I'm not saying violence is good, but I was eight years old, so don't I ain't taking responsibility for something I did when I was eight. But it was the right thing to do anyway, for me. So I guess there was that reactive but protective side. We're all different, we've all got our thing somewhere. We've all, I mean, I, I remember going to a fight with someone because he was killing bees. I was older than I was, probably about 14 at the time. So I started uh, <laughs> punching him. But that, that's, you know, that's, for me, that's bullying. It's the same thing, you know. A bee's a tiny little thing. To start f killing them for no reason. I mean, you know, if a bee stung me, apart from the fact that they're going to die anyway, I would try and I would want to squash it. Or a wasp. I've travelled to the end of the world to get that wasp back. If a wasp stung me. That was, That would be my mentality in the past not so much now of course but you know I was, I was spend every minute of the day searching for that wasp which is an extreme reaction so I think with me uh, my reactions it wasn't that I was reactive to everything but when I reacted it was sometimes a bit extreme compared to what was actually going on so I was reactive, but not necessarily reactive to everything. I wasn't one of these really awful to be around people where everything you say to them, like, what do you mean by that? Or argue, always arguing. They're just, they're just hard work, aren't they? And someone that always knows best, even though I've, I've noticed something, the people that always know best are the people that haven't updated their information in a long time and they will argue they will argue and argue and argue and I you know what I can find out the correct information within one minute on my phone but they don't like that they want to argue about it and they won't even change their um, belief system based on evidence to the contrary You can't argue with people like that. There's no point. So there's a lot of difficult people to deal with sometimes. And my advice is to have nothing to do with them. <laughs> there you go. Um, if you can avoid them, avoid them. Probably sounds harsh. But if someone is reactive all the time, if someone's a victim, all the, you know, if they're really big into it, like poor me, poor me, all the time, may you know, I would say try to avoid them. Maybe encourage them to get some therapy, but unless your job is helping people like that which my job has been in the past but I wouldn't want to spend time with them I see them for 50 minutes in the therapy room I don't want to go home with them I don't want to get to know them as people outside of the therapy room I don't want to be around that kind of negativity and hopefully that negativity would reduce anyway seeing me because I was a really good therapist hard to believe the amount of people think yeah you just you just said uh, people should keep away from people that are mentally ill it's not really what I said not really what I said is if somebody is this is for people that are I've had a hard time with it you know really if I know you perhaps can't disown your child of course but most people do but not in a... I think they, dis, they don't disown them, but they have to take a step back. You know, if you've got, if you know, if you've got a friend and every time you see them, they want to borrow money. 
or if you've got a friend and every time you see them um, something bad's happened you know it's always the same always some tr- drama what's the f- what are you getting out of that what are you getting out of that what is the point in that friendship if it's just one way traffic and it's just misery and I'm not talking like a miserable situation or a traumatic situation I'm just talking about like a general day where they're just miserable continuously trying to bring down everyone wanting everyone else to feel the way they feel and that's what you get with someone that's very negative is instead of wanting to feel positive like you they don't uh, let's say if you are being positive a negative person generally wouldn't look at a positive person and think I like the way you are I like the way that you're positive and I like the way that you conduct yourself you look happy you're smiling you're fun to be around the opposite seems to happen it's almost like automatically I want you to be as miserable as me but then I can flip it knowing how miserable I've been in the past and how negative I've been in the past and when you're miserable being around someone that's positive is absolutely annoying <laughs> it works both ways it's, I think positive some positive people can They'll be around negative people and can still think, well, come on, you know, I can help this person to feel more positive. And they've got enough positivity in them to not be drained dry by that emotional zombie sucking <laughs> all the energy, life energy out of people, which is what depressed people automatically do to other people sometimes and I think that's something that doesn't get looked at and I wonder would that be something that could stir someone else on to want to make changes for themselves if they realise that they are they're not you know they're not nice to be around sometimes they may not be aware of it that's actually painful to be around especially those people that have not made any effort to change oh I'm never going to change I'm always going to be the same this is who I am almost with pride I'm always going to be an arsehole well you don't need to always be that way in fact the only reason if you're not changing that means that you're forcing yourself not to change and you're putting all your energy into that because nature, life, time changes all the time, it's constantly you have to change so if you're able to actually force a prevention of changing then that's something that you've done consciously. So you're trying to stick to some kind of image of yourself that no longer really exists. It's outdated. You're a dinosaur. It's outdated. And you know, you can be happier. But you're choosing not to be for some reason. So in some ways, you don't have to do anything except let go let go of that holding on to that this is me this is how I am this is how I am this is what I believe like set in stone it's not about letting go of your identity it's about letting go of the bullshit letting go of the bullshit letting go of the misery and the negativity and allowing some love into your heart and into your life 
So maybe, you know, people might want to spend time with you. As opposed to feeling it as an obligation. Because, you know what, simple fact, if you're, not you, I'm just not saying to a person, but if a person is being verbally abusive to their partner, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, if they're being verbally abusive to their partner, regardless of whether it's due to mental illness or due to... Um, Whatever, whatever the situation is, moods, or just the situation, whatever. That person, I'm yawning now, that person that you're being verbally abusive to you, they don't like you in that moment. They may still love you, but they don't like you. And as soon as you're verbally abusive to someone, not only do they not like you, but they're not going to like you for a while, you know? It might only be a few minutes, might be a few, a few hours. But they don't like you. Now, some people long to be loved. I would say it's more important to be liked. Because if you're liked and someone stays with you because they like you, then you know that they're staying with you because they want to. If someone stays with you because of love, they may absolutely, they might not have any kind thoughts. But the love, you know, obligation... So people, some people stay together because of love and they can't stand each other or one person can't stand the other because the other's been uh, verbally or maybe worse abusive to them but they stay with them and that person's oblivious oh it's okay I'm an arsehole to my boyfriend or my girlfriend sometimes and I say things that that I don't mean to say I can't control myself that's more bullshit. People say they can't control themselves. Well, why don't you go to do that? Go and go and do that to someone else. You know these these men. For example, a man will be verbally abusive to his girlfriend, and he says sorry, please, or maybe physically, so sorry. Uh, won't happen again I just lost control I couldn't control myself okay I I call bullshit on that so if you can't control it then how come that same person doesn't do the same thing in other places Why doesn't he get into a row and be verbally abusive to some big, you know, seven foot um, monster sitting in a nightclub or a pub? Why doesn't he go up to a police officer and start giving it the big one? But does it at home when there's no one else around? Can't control it. It's a lie. It's a lie that's... It's one of those lies that people believe themselves. So therefore they don't question it. Well, I can't control it. Sorry, won't happen again. By the way... If it happens once, that's it. Everyone needs to have a deal breaker. That's a whole different conversation. But if it happens once, that's it. That would be the rule. I mean, our person its you know, we've all got our personal beliefs um, and what we would do. 
to people that do stuff like that. But, you know, that aside, never allow anyone to hurt you. Ever. More than once. There's times when you can't stop it. There's times, you know, um, that you can't. You don't allow someone to to be abusive. Sometimes just they are. And you, you kind of have to ride it out. And it's a horrible, traumatic, life-changing even. But never, ever allow that person to do it again. Ever. I mean, that's, that's one rule that everybody, I believe, should stick to. And they don't. I'm just surprised how many people are still walking around after doing stuff like that. And no one does anything. And a lot of the reason for that is because people don't believe that it's happened. The amount of women, the amount of men that I know in the past that said, oh, women lie. They just lie all the time. It's like, what do you, what are you? Why would anyone lie about something like that? But then it does sometimes, sometimes it is a lie. But we go for like the, the micro, you know, the, the evidence based on the minority. So 5% of people, uh, you know, it's like say, uh, the insurance companies saying, well, 5% of people actually set fire to their own houses. Or 1% set fire to their own houses for insurance claims. Therefore, everybody's, every fire claim, we're going to just assume that it's the person that set fire to their own house. It's that kind of mentality. It's... I mean, you know, when I was younger, I would have just called that being thick, being stupid. It is... And I don't I don't use those words anymore. Because I spent years of being told I was thick and stupid. And so I don't... I don't call people names like that. Um... So there must be an equivalent, <laughs> I don't know what, for that mental mentality of thinking. So I suppose, blimey, I've been talking, I've been waffling on for ages. One of the things, really, that I'm kind of trying to get to is two things. Three, it's quite a few different things, just chatting about stuff. Chatting about mental health whatever but education self education we're in times now where you can learn stuff you can learn just as much or you can learn way more from the internet than you can from going to university there's some things obviously you're going to get from university experience um, especially if it's a, you're not necessarily going to learn how to become an electrician as easily outside of college as you would do if you went to college to learn it or an apprenticeship of course you'll learn it'll be easier way to learn or how to put together a nuclear power station you probably don't want to get that information on the internet but as far as how to become more positive as far as how to uh, let go of this the mentality that holds us back the victim mentality the negativity there's so many resources online course there's you know podcasts and stuff but there's audio books there's books that you can buy to read there's you can get books that obviously talk about people's lives 
and talk about what it's like to for them to have bipolar and I've read a few of those books but then you can get books from doctors and professors talking about the science behind uh, things like neuroplasticity and you know the, the way now that it's not just about behavior you know they're looking into the brain now and realizing that it's basically a brain disorder it's the brain change the brain changing the brain changes the behavior but on the flip side changing behavior changes the brain so you can change your brain by changing your behavior by thinking differently by listening to positive messages by reading positive books by maybe spending less time watching the news and by keeping away from pe other people that are negativity that are negativity that are very, or like always negative or seem to always be negative or spend less time with someone that maybe is sexist or racist I know some people, some people say well, I will never be friends with someone that's racist well I've got people friends that seem to have a tendency towards that way not many but I've met lots of people over the years and I've worked with people and sometimes you just got to get on with it and that's like almost a tiny part of them is you don't even know it's there until suddenly they're talking about a subject and they're kind of pathetic when it comes to that subject and I like to make fun of them so you know sometimes there's nothing more fun than making fun of a racist person or a sexist person someone that's homophobic we're really ripping into them making fun of them making them look stupid and feel stupid which is how they should feel so that, I think that's quite a good thing sometimes you know <laughs> you can work from within it's all like almost like having a little play thing you know like the it's like a toy what should we do I'll bring out my homophobic toy and you can just poke him and make him feel ridiculous because people with those views and those opinions it's almost like their brain shuts down and they can't argue the case at all because it's all emotion it's all emotion and people that are emotional cannot argue not really I mean, some people can but you know when it, if it's um, something as pathetic as being racist or homophobic or sexist you know hating a group of people the part of their brain that's responsible for that pathetic thinking um, and pathetic behaviour doesn't work very well it means the brain that part of the brain is not working you know very well it's because it's not based on reality it's based on probably outdated material based on very selective a selective memory a selective bunch of facts uh, details selected that will not under any circumstances be updated they cannot update it and they're the ones sometimes that have children who come home and say dad I just want to tell you that I love you and I'm gay and you know I hope you're okay with that and per suddenly the alarms go off in that person's head and they can't accept it yet they love that child with all their heart very strange the brain is a very very weird thing it's a very strange thing people's beliefs that's why I think the less beliefs you have the better I don't mean like getting rid of the belief that you know you shouldn't kill people of course I mean 
anyone that believes other than that is they're real. You know, if they if someone thinks it's okay to go around killing people, then they're real. They're not. They're not well. They're brain damaged. They got seriously, seriously, seriously ill. There's of course who in the forces and you know it's part of their job to kill people. I suppose if they were a sniper, that's a different thing, isn't it, I suppose? Or is it? <laughs> Blimey. I always thought it'd be quite fun to be a sniper. From a distance. But then I watched a film, I think it was called Sniper, and I realised that Although you're far away, you actually got the the lens is big, so you can see the person. So you're not far away, really. It's almost like you're in front of them. So no, it's not the same as just like a little ant from far away. That's what I thought it would be like when I was a kid. When I thought about you know employment options, <laughs> I thought about joining the army. So it's been a bit of a bamble wamble of bambling rambling stuff. Just some thoughts. Maybe have some thoughts about people that who are dealing with those with mental health issues and supporting they need support as well that's the thing they need support as well and I think it's it's useful to have a first aid kit in place for like a mental health first aid kit so something that can you know uh, like a you know a fire alarm or something like that. Something in a sense of what can you do in those situations where the person that's unwell is going into one and being, you know, what can you do in that situation in order to support both parties, both of the people? And that would have to be personal for both parties, wouldn't it, really, I guess? But they need support too. Yeah, so the idea of Yeah. Why would you allow someone to be verbally abusive to you? Which is emotional abuse. Abuse, abuse, remember that word. You're an adult. It's almost, oh, they have this condition. This diagnosis therefore it's okay for me to be verbally emotionally abused by that person it's like a get out of prison free card no it's not I've been diagnosed with bipolar a personality, personality disorder and as well as other things in the past, anxiety and stress and all that stuff. If I'm in a relationship with a woman and I'm emotionally abusive to her, verbally like ranting and being horrible to her, putting her down, she should leave me. At the very least, she should walk out of that relationship. 
at the very first time it ever happens. I'm not talking about an argument about something that's happened between you and, you know, if you cheated on someone, mind you, if you cheat on someone, just leave the relationship. That's the end of the relationship generally. But if I was verbally abusive to someone in a relationship with them, they should leave me. Having bipolar is not an excuse to be an arsehole. Being mentally ill is not an excuse to be an arsehole. It's not an excuse to be violent. It's not an excuse to be verbally abusive. Sorry. Regardless of what anyone thinks or uh, believes, these are factual words. It does not give you or does not give them an excuse to be abusive the only situation where I can see that that possibly could be okay and not okay but something that people would put up with is with dementia because dementia changes a person's personality and sometimes people can be really horrible uh, you know quite abusive when they're going through the dementia uh, illness and I knew someone years ago that turned he was turning but they didn't know he was, didn't know what was wrong with him but he used to own a gym he's a former Mr. Universe bodybuilder lovely man really lovely and I used to go in there and he used to go on and on when I first knew him he was like so nice we'd chat and we'd laugh and near the end before he got diagnosed with the illness he was ranting swearing so aggressive now I found it funny but at the time I didn't know what was wrong with him I didn't know I found it funny a little bit I was a little bit on edge but he because he was so lovely I didn't feel that he was a threat. In reality, I mean, he was a big, strong, he wasn't big, you know, he was very short, but he was strong, as you imagine, former Mr. Universe bodybuilder. And he's like, I had no idea, because I was only young, I was like 26, 27, 28. So I didn't really know about that stuff back then. Wasn't really talked about. And unfortunately, yeah, he, he passed away after a couple of years of that. But that, I can't really see any other situation where um, putting up with abuse would be acceptable. And even in that situation, you need help with that. You know, if someone's got a. Uh, a partner, loved one with dementia. I suppose some children with special needs can be quite aggressive, but yeah, it's a difficult one. My advice, so if you're in an adult relationship with another adult, never allow anyone to hurt you. Never allow anyone to call, you know, to be verbally, emotionally, or physically abusive to you ever, ever. And if it happens, make sure it never happens again with that person. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. No, that don't mean nothing. Everyone's sorry. You made me do this. No, no. But it works the other way as well. If you find yourself being verbally and emotionally abusive towards your partner, leave. Seek help. Seek emotional help. Counseling therapy. 
if you've hurt someone, go to the police. Report yourself to the police. Tell them. I don't know if that's possible to hand yourself in. But if you've hurt someone physically, hand yourself in to the police. But get help. Go to the emergency department of a hospital, to a police station, if you want to receive an end. I'm sure if you went into a police station and said, I've just been in a row with my partner and I want to hurt that person really badly, I'm going to, they will stick you in a cell. I don't know if that's true, I like to think it is, which will then prevent you from doing that thing. And then, of course, you move on away from that partner and get help. This is what people are scared to say. Scared to tell people, tell, scared to tell abusers to leave. Scared to tell people who are being abused to leave. It's like the unsaid thing. Oh, I'll give him one more chance. Or, oh, and it's not. No, it's both sexes, not just men against women. Well, it's, in fact, it's four ways, isn't it? It's men against women, women against men, men against men, women against women. And then, of course, adults against children, and children against adults. It depends. So it can go very different ways. And then you've got what happens at work. Some people are abusive to each other at work. I've had that. I've even been that probably, to be fair. I've been, a, I've been verbally abusive to people at work in the past. Usually as a reaction to them sort of being rude to me. But even so, it probably wasn't acceptable at the time. So I come to this not from a, from a just a, a general opening up of the conversation. That's it. Just uh, yeah, no, like you should do this or should do that although there are some things that I believe that everyone should do in certain situations like get out now if it's an abusive situation get out never accept it never put up with it no Have a mental health condition is not an excuse to be an arsehole. And I know some people take it as that. Oh, I can do what I want now. I can't control what I do or say. Yeah, you can. And I'm not talking about when someone's going through a psychosis. When they're going through a psychosis, obviously, different situation. But for someone to walk around every day behave in the same way that's not a psychosis that's someone just being an arsehole with mental health issues psychosis doesn't last as far as I'm aware doesn't last for years and years and years and years and years delusions can I guess So unless that person is in a complete dream world where they have no sense of reality, then they do have control over what they do and say. And if the person doesn't have any sense of reality, they shouldn't be in society in the first place. however harsh that might seem the, pl the world is not safe for people that have no sense of reality if someone is in psychosis 
they need to be looked after for however long it takes whether it's for a month or for life it's not safe for people that are going through that to be in the world they have to be looked after they need to be looked after and cared for so if someone has no sense of reality they can't be out in society and unfortunately there are a lot of people out there that really are not in touch with reality causing problems going in and out of prison some of them hurting others yet they're still allowed to do it I don't know what to do about that but you know I've got a few ideas but they're a little bit extreme I think the bottom line is mental illness or not everybody deserves to be able to feel safe in society and also at home whether alone or with your partner with your parents with your children everybody deserves the simple right to feel safe Or the chance to feel safe. The opportunity. But a lot of changes are needed for that time to come. Maybe we can work towards that. By helping others. Maybe to get in touch with reality. To realise that their behaviour may not be acceptable. So... That's the end of this hour and a half talk about stuff. So I'm going to go. I don't even know what to title this. It's just ramblings about mental health issues. Something like that. It's not even going to be. um, It's not really about anything specific, I guess. It started out as talking about being a victim victim mentality and then moving on to really being a victim of emotional abuse and to not allow it to happen again ever I'm talking ever I mean, there's some things that people, you know, if you said to them, would you eat, would you eat that pie, uh, peanut butter or Marmite? Will you eat that Marmite sandwich? And they would say no. And they would mean no. And they would mean no. Like, no way on this planet, in my life, would I ever touch Marmite because it is disgusting. Yet that same person may have a conversation like, uh, you know, hear their partner say, I'm sorry about last night, it will never happen again. Um, uh, Just give me another chance and it will be fine. I'm sorry I said those things to you. I'm sorry I I put my hands on you and hurt you. And, um, And that person says, oh, okay, 
you can have another chance with but they won't eat a Marmite sandwich definiteness in their mind will not touch Marmite you could not force them to do that yeah they don't have that definiteness towards someone being abusive to them you know the idea of someone hurting you emotionally or physically needs to be in that category of no never never ever acceptable never acceptable never I can't say never enough but I won't keep saying it because it's going to be boring never acceptable if it happens once move on unfortunately that person gets to live that person gets to probably meet up with someone else and probably do the same thing to them which is out of our control unfortunately but you can stop it from happening to you ever again with that person and I'm talking about men and women I'm not talking about one particular sex So yeah, have a good weekend. <laughs> That's a bit of a bit of a weird recording, really. But I would say some of it's very important, and never let anyone hurt you. Seriously, I mean, we have to. There's some situations where you just have to put up with it while it's happening because you can't do anything about it but afterwards oh no never allow it to happen again but that's one of many subjects I've kind of <laughs> uh, tripped over during this recording so maybe it's useful maybe not I don't know so I'm going to go thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy try and get in touch with more positivity lots of love Bye.